A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Rabia Sultan Begin, Destiny Writes Its Own Script. Treasure of Samarkand. The Legend About Love. Bedspread of Khan's Power. Peace on the Sacred Land. Time and people tried to destroy this monument, but it resisted. It's not just the heritage of world architecture, but a tribute to the memory of a woman, to her love and loyalty towards her husband, children, and places that have become so close to her heart. Turkestan. 62 meters from Koja Ahmed Yasawi, the mausoleum of Rabia Sultan Begin. She stayed in these places. When she was leaving beautiful Samarkand, she asked to bury her not in Samarkand, but here near Koja Ahmed Yasawi. Noble and virtuous in the epithets of contemporaries, but why did she find her peace here, not in the family burial ground? Did she love sincerely or just could not betray? Was she the main character of the events or just got into their maelstrom? Rabia Sultan Begin, Destiny Writes Its Own Scenario. Rabia Begin is the daughter of the great Uzbek ruler, scholar, educator, politician of the Middle Ages, Uluk Bek. And although she lived in Samarkand in her heart, she was here. Women played a huge role precisely in foreign policy in easing military relations. Chapter 1. Treasure of Samarkand. The shopkeepers in the main square bow down in reverence. Oh, the greatest. He, as usual, hurries to the university, according to local legends. Whenever he had a free time between affairs of the state, the ruler of the Timurids, Ilukbek, taught in the Madras, which he had founded himself in Samarkand. The Registan Square. In translation, it means a sandy square. This has always been the very center of the city. The most striking example of Persian architecture tracks to come inside with its coziness and because of the scorching rays of the sun. From here, students go into their rooms. This is a teacher's lounge. What's so different about it? There are niches for books, a mini library, places for lamps, and the corner of fireplace and a stove for heating the room. She stayed in one of these rooms. Contrary to traditions and laws, her father sent Rabia to the madras. She was only seven years old. Not much time passed. In 1449, she suddenly became an adult. Ulukbek was killed by his son. He was an extraordinary person for this time. He became an adult, of course, after his death. It caused a lot of different stories. The murder of his father, elder brother of Rabia, did not reign for long. He himself was killed six months later, and the throne was taken by Ulukbek's nephew, but also for a little while. In 1451, another relative of Rabia, Abu Sa'id, joined the fight for the throne. He appealed to Khan Abu Khayyir for military support. In history, he is called the Khan of nomadic Uzbeks. There are, of course, many questions about this. In no case should one confuse nomadic Uzbeks with modern Uzbeks. The state of nomadic Uzbeks is a term used in Soviet historiography. It also appears in sources under the name the Uzbek Khanate, in order of the Golden Horde, Uzbek Khan. The third option is the Horde of Abu Khayyir. The latter is more correct, many researchers believe. He was a very authoritative ruler for his time. He practically ruled the state of nomadic Uzbeks for 40 years, from 1428 to 1468, almost half a century. And during this time, he was able to gain huge prestige and considerable territories, the lands of the Siberian Khanate, Khorezm, Suza, and Signa. And then an invaluable message came. The troops of Samarkand went on a military campaign. As a result, the city was taken without bloodshed. For the Samarkand throne, 
the new ruler Abu Sa'id paid to Abu Khair rich gifts, the most valuable of which were her beauty and freedom. She was certainly much younger than Abu Khair. Rabia, great-granddaughter of the great Tamerlan, had turned 14. According to other sources, she was barely 17, a descendant of no less than the great Genghis Khan. Abu Khair was already going to meet his 40th spring, but to connect the two key dynasties of the region was a great success. Rabia Begim was to play Rabia Begim was destined to play the role of conciliator, the role of a woman who should contribute to the stability of the Timurid Shaibanid relationship first of all. Yes, and in general, Kazakh Uzbek relations. However, noble blood is not the main advantage of the bride. Quite rightfully, she was considered to be one of the most educated women of the Far East. If you want to take gold from Samarkand, the most valuable one was Rabia Sultan Begin, advisors told Abu Khayyid. With great celebration, Abu Khayyid was then seen off by the Samarkand nobility, knowing full well that the rapprochement of the steppe mighty lord with them would sooner or later lead him to their camp. Among the sabers assigned to Rabia, 40 young slaves and 40 fine slaves were running, and a huge white elephant in front of which sat the bride, under the silk canopy. From Ilias is in Berlin, the concealed sword. Chapter 2, The Legend About Love Severe-looking warriors at the huge gates, flags, torches, pipes, drums, and at first glance, foreign guests at this holiday of the Middle Ages. Camera, motor, Janibek, action! Historical sources are silent about when exactly one of the future founders of the Kazakh Khanate, Sultan Janibek, saw beautiful Rabia. Fictional novel, in particular the first volume of Nomads, tells that it was on the hunt. That's quite possible. Representatives of the steppe aristocracy of the Abu Khayyar state were always invited to participate at any mass events. The sultans of Janibek and Kerei even outnumbered the Khan by the nobility. Kerei is a nephew and Janibek is a direct grandson of Uruz Khan, Barak. This is the story of the return of the throne. Historically, this throne belonged to the Urusids, but it was usurped for 40 years by Khan Shaibanid, Abu Khayyir Khan. But enough of politics, let's look at the romantic story. So, a year, well, not exactly, earlier than 1451 and no later than 1456 on the Khan's hunt. Her beauty blinded all the men around. Everyone wanted to catch her eyes. The fourth wife of Abu Khayyir, Rabia Sultan Begin. She was covered in gold. As well as her saddle, the bridle, the stirrups were also made of gold. Her pointed hat moved under the wind. An expensive necklace glittered under the sun. But even more beautiful was a bright clean face with delicate eyebrows and a black waterfall of twisted hair. From Ilias is in Berlin, the concealed sword. For sure, their meeting was favored by the stars themselves. At least according to folk legends, Rabia, the daughter of the great astronomer Ulrich Beck herself, was well versed in horoscopes and many events in her life she built according to the movements of planets. Janibek Khan was also seduced by her beauty. In cinematography, they look at each other and time, unlike their hearts, almost stops. But how could such ardent feelings arise in reality? What they say about the true love story of Johnny Beck and Rabia Begim is more of a legend than fiction. Chapter 3. The Bedspread of Khan's Power Narrow streets are unusually filled with people. Here is a boy running while ladies pass by. 
Everything is according to a certain style. The people, horses, and even the walls. A decorative city in the role of a historically real place, Signa, which is located in the territory of the Kislodar region. The roots of the statehood of the Kazakh Khanate go to the White Horde, Agorda, and Signak was the capital of Agorda, and the so-called Golden Throne was here, which had existed since the times of Uros Khan. The throne she shared with her husband being the fourth beloved wife, but did she love her husband? The Shahina was an excellent mother, the cradle of kingdom and the highest veil of royal power wrote contemporaries about Rabia Sultan Begin. She was very religious in her heart and was always respected in society, among ordinary people and among nobility. She was respected by the people and by her husband. Before Abu Khair started to receive rumors that she got infatuated with a younger sultan of noble blood. According to the legend, it was Jani Beck. However, according to the version of Ilya Sess in Berlin, Rabia had an affair with another fighter. Angry Khan Abu Khair walked on the carpet and came up with an execution for his beautiful wife. The most curious thing was that Rabia Sultan Begim was rather the daughter of her great father, the scientist Uluk Beck, than a grand granddaughter of her cruel grandfather Tamalan. Even in her thoughts, she did not do anything that her powerful husband suspected. Ilyas has been a concealed sword. According to Esen Berlin, the Khan's jealousy did not have time to turn into a tragedy. Abu Khair learned that the fighter whom he had helped turned out to be her brother. Despite her youth, she managed to get through all sorts of political intrigues, palace intrigues and difficulties. Information confirming the close acquaintance of Rabia and Jani Beg is not found in any historical source. For example, in the work of the Persian chronicler Kukistani, a lot of beautiful poetry was dedicated to Rabia. But the name of Jani Beg was not mentioned. It's unlikely that the feelings that link them can be considered romantic. Maybe it was a feeling of respect, friendly relationships, understanding between them, but not to the extent of love or romantic feelings. I think it's true because they always thought first of all about consequences, about people, and not only themselves. And yet, love intertwined with big politics, at least in legends, presumably one of the reasons for the discord between the Kazakh sultans and the Khan was not the wife, but the daughter of Abu Khair, whom Janibek himself wanted to marry. Allegedly, the Khan not only refused the marriage, but ordered to kill his child. There is no doubt in one thing, Rabir was very upset about the quarrels between the sultan and Abu Khair. Peace-loving by nature, she always tried to smooth out sharp corners. Eastern women, wives, sisters of sultans, played a huge role in solving various disputes. But despite all the attempts of the Rabia to settle the disputes, the sultans, along with their subordinates, left overnight. Epilogue. Peace on the sacred land. A few years later, Abu Khair decided to punish the rebellious subjects. They say that Rabia, in every possible way, dissuaded her husband from this campaign, but destiny writes its own scenarios. It was the fall of 1468. The messenger in black galloped to the Khan's headquarters, shouting about mourning and death from afar. The terrible enemy was Khan Abu Khair, but the news of his death should be given in a proper way. And the messenger flew off his horse, stood on his knee, and gave the Khan Janibek his neck with a belt hanging on it as a sign of sadness. From Ilya says in Berlin, the conceived sword. According to one version, Abu Khair died of an illness, and the battle did not take place. For 17 years she mourned after her husband. Is this an evidence of loyalty or not? She was involved in charity, and she dedicated herself entirely to her sons. They both became Khans. She allocated money from the treasury for buildings, for these channels, for irrigation. 
and after her death, she wanted to stay beside her husband. There is a suggestion that he too was buried in Turkestan. <laughs>